Hey guys, my name's Brandon and welcome to Finance. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to calculate the expected return of a stock and how to measure its risk via standard deviation. So in every choice you've ever made in your life, there's always been a level of risk. Whether it's buying that new pair of shoes and you've had you face the risk of, well, am I going to like these shoes? Are they going to be comfy once I leave the store? You know, who knows? Well, in investments, risk is considered to be the opportunity an investor has to gain or lose money. And how we measure this risk is by using what's called the standard deviation. Now, we use a standard deviation because it can be brought into like terms with the expected returns. So they can be brought into like terms of uh, being looked at as a percentage. Whereas if we just calculated the variance, the variance is too large. And we're not really given a lot of information from that. So how do we calculate this? It's by two steps. One, we calculate the expected return for your stock in your portfolios. And then secondly, you sum all the values and you find the square root of it to calculate the standard deviation. So expected return, multiply your probabilities times the return. And in standard deviation, you add up the probabilities multiplied by the difference of the return minus the expected return from the portfolio squared and then you find the square root of that sum and it might look a little confusing there's a lot of you know p's and x's and r's everywhere so we'll go over on how to calculate this in an example i promise you it's not that difficult so in this problem, we're going to calculate the first step in figuring out how to find the standard deviation, and that is by finding the expected return. So the problem is, is you're thinking about buying a stock that sells for $100. You did your research and you came up with the following table. Now we'll look at how to calculate uh, everything on the market expectation of grade. So you did your research and you found that the potential price change could be $130, let's say, in the next year. And you found that in that year, you'll receive a $3 dividend. So the next thing you have to do is figure out that return. And if you look uh, above the table, you'll see how that's done for great. You add 130 for the potential price change, the $3 for the dividend, and subtract the price that it sells for of 100, and then divide that by 100. And that will give you a return of 0.33. You then multiply the 0.33 times by the probability that you're usually given. And in this case, we found it to be 0.5. And if you do that, you then get an expected return for a great market expectation of 0.165. Now, following that same process for great, good, and bad, you then would add your expected returns, and for this portfolio, you'll get a total expected return of 0 0.202. And now this number is needed in order to calculate the standard deviation. So this is why we kind of go through this headache of you know, doing all this math. But it's real simple. It looks like a lot of numbers, and, and I, I know you could do it. So we did step one, and we figured out how to find the expected return. And to do that, we got 0 0.202. Now we're going to use that, and we're going to find the uh, standard deviation. And we have that formula of standard deviation of probability multiplied by return minus the portfolio's expected return squared and taking the square root of that. So let's see how these numbers fit into that formula by using the great market expectation. So the first number we're going to start off with is the probability. So the great market expectation has a probability of 0.5. The next number is going to be the return. So the return that we calculated in the previous section to be 0.33. Now we're going to subtract that from our portfolio's expected return of 0 0.202 and then square that. We're going to follow that same process for the good and bad market expectations, and that will lead us to a standard deviation of 0.454. 
Now I promise you it doesn't get any more difficult than this. Uh, you might see a problem with a little bit more words and more information, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, as long as you can dissect this information and make a table like this, it's gonna make your life so much easier, and you're gonna get every problem um, correct because they really they follow the same uh, process. So as long as you make this table and you find that information and use that formula, I'm, I have no doubt that you could you could nail any problem that you do. So as always, thank you all for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. And while you're down there, give me a like and subscribe. If you'd like me to make any other videos or, or explain anything a little bit more deeper, please let me know. And uh, thanks for listening. I hope you all have a great day.